equation is 937 in the y-axis and 500 thousandths in the x-axis from the bottom left. including the radius of my gate. And I'm going to lock my x-axis. scale next to it. Ah, see? I almost screwed up. I didn't go my extra hundred thousands. And um, it's 63. at the middle of the block and now I'm at 937 and I am at one half inch in. That's how you do it without a digital readout. the proper speed for it. I've done that. And this is approximate, but you'll have a variable speed machine. I'm going to set my depth now. The way to do that without a digital readout, actually what I recommend no matter what machine you're on is use the depth stop. Here, in this case, because I don't care precisely how deep it is, I want to go seven-eighths of an inch deep with the tip of the drill. I'll place the tip of the drill at the top of the part, and I will look at this scale on the side, and I'll scale down from there seven-eighths of an inch. And I'll adjust my stop collar to seven-eighths of an inch. That guarantees it's deep enough, but I will not punch out the bottom of the hole because this is one half, one inch thick. Everybody follow? Okay, setting a positive stop is more reliable than a digital readout because you can go past your digital readout zero.
done with the hole. Check how deep it is. Simple way to do that. Put the drill in the hole. Pull any chips out. Put it in again. Grab it right at the edge of the hole. Pull it out. And put a scale on it. I can't tell you how many students Dozens of students have come to me with pails of wool because they spread with oversized and we went and measured the depth of the hole and they only drilled a half inch deep or five eighths of an inch deep. Same thing with the ring gold. Oh, I thought I drilled deep enough, but they didn't pay attention. Okay, so just a quick check tells you you've gone deep. And look at that. I'm going to countersink it. I'll do this at low RPM because it gives me better control. I'll use a little tapping on it. Once again, we can use our depth control to our advantage. Now, if, if as I have, you center drilled a little bit deeper than uh, the center drill still shows, build the hole, that's part of the chamber, so I can't just touch off and measure. So I'm going to just countersink a little bit, and then countersink a little bit more. simply put it in there and see if the countersink shows around it. You see? You see the edge of the countersink around there? That means that this will not make a burr stick up. It's a nice clean countersink and it's in line with their requirement. Countersink all holes 30 thousandths maximum unless shown. They don't give you a minimum. But they want a little bit of a countersink on all these holes. So they are ready to tap. Any shop you work in, if you make friends with the welding department or if you're over in welding, you can take a standard air nozzle and make a little adapter with just pipe plug adapters and a little bit of tubing, stainless tubing, that will let you get a hole blower out. <laughs> then you will need them. Oops, sorry. When you're doing this, do you just put it in the hole and blast? No. You cover it. Now we're ready to set up our tapping stack. I'm going to use the small wrench and get my two taps on my tap guide, going to have here somewhere. Make sure that your tap guide is in good condition. If the tap guide has lots of wobble, this is okay. But if one is really loose, don't use it. Um, ah, now this drill chuck does not go out big enough. So I'm going to reduce my tap stack by going to a column. Would one of you mind doing me a big favor and going and getting a one half inch collet in the collet drawer? That'll save the plug tap. So, did you, did you see any chips out of these? No. They're not damaged? Good to hear. Get this nice and tight, check it for wiggle. some load on the spring loaded tap guide. Don't bottom it all the way out. Some of these will stick if you bottom them. Okay, now we're ready to oil it. And you'll be using
is a fingertip pressure on this. It's a small tap. Anything under about three eighths is a small tap, and they're easy to break. They get harder to break when you get bigger. One half turn, one turn, one and a half, two turns. I'm backing it up. I'm breaking the chip. And I'll, I'll, on my next turns, I'm going to have you back it up and break the chip so you feel what it's like. Yeah. One turn. And I also want you to feel what it's like. You can feel the flexing in the tap. Come feel this. And feel it shouldn't be any harder to turn than this. Right. I'll hold the camera. Yes. Our new star, Karen. Okay. And you may want to use, if that's hard for you, you can use the whole hand yeah. for better leverage. But just feel that flex. It should not be any harder than that. You can actually break that tap. Now, turn it the other way. Feel it break off the chips. Oh, wow. See? And yeah. that's it. That's all you need to do. Cool. They're curled up in there. They're just short. Now, I think I'm going to go get a new tap because I think it should be even a little bit easier than that. If this is dull, it will cut oversized. I'll be right back. find out right now if that needed to go oversized. Nope, it's good so far. Yeah. Okay. It feels like it's going well, so I'm going to try a brand new tap. See if I can show you the difference. If there isn't any, then I'm just being paranoid. Tell that to the YouTube world. What? Yes, it is. It's not much easier, but it's a little easier. If you want, if you can feel it. This is dead sharp. This is brand new. It's kind of a quarter turn. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Awesome. So this tap is oh, still okay. It's still cutting the side, but it's on its way out. Okay, let somebody else have a turn now. Feel that? Cuts a little bit easier. Right, now I'm going to count turns coming out. I don't know where I'm at since you crazy have been having at it. I get it right to here. And I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Nine turns. Okay, so we're going farther. How many turns? Well, if it's 20 threads per inch, 20 turns and an inch, how many is it for a half an inch? Uh, ten. ten, that's right.
So we're close. But not there yet. I'm going to 12 turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right on target, ten, six, Seven, six, twelve, eight, two chips, twelve and a quarter, twelve and a half. The minute you feel the resistance start to build up, start increase rapidly, stop. Because you're hitting the bottom of the hole. I did not. Techniques we talked about, that's when I use my breathing. <laughs> Whatever he does. Okay. Alright, so uh, I'll check with my go no go. The go goes all the way, it's a nice snug fit. And we can look at the flat it's on, and I can go one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns. This is the beginning of my depth gauging. Five turns, six, seven, eight, nine, nine turns. I'll replace my plug cap with my bottom cap. Bottom tap should not enlarge the threads up at the top at all. Oh, I didn't check with the no go. One quarter ten. Oh, God, two flats. Very good. I'm a happy boy. Now, you can use the guide if you want to, if it's helpful to get this going, but once it's started, it's not going to cut new threads. It's only going to complete the threads. It's not going to change the threads at the top. It's only going to complete the threads at the bottom. You will feel it start to cut gently as it begins to complete almost completed threads and it gets harder and harder. And when it feels as hard as the other tap, you stop. You don't go any deeper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's just what we want. All the way down, not the turns, okay, facing that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm pulling up now. Eleven. 12, so we're beyond our limit. That's good. 10 is the at 10 complete turns is the absolute minimum. So if it didn't go deep enough and it was hard to bottom tap, then you go back in with your plug tap for one more turn and then bottom tap a little bit deeper. Any questions about that? Yeah. Yeah.
put that away. Liquor. You know, this a lot, but I had one key that we make clear. When we loosen the drawbar, we only loosen it by hand one, two turns. Do not unscrew it all the way. We do not want to damage the threads in the collet or especially on the drawbar. And that way the tool will just drop down a little bit, not drop out. tool holder of the collar. So now we're going to do our edge fine for go back and do our edge fine. I'll do both of these holes if you want, but most of the time people just want one. took them out of, there's another one in there, on the, on the table there. Thank you. So my lowest hole is one eighth of an inch X and one quarter inch Y. So if you set an, an X and Y zero, that's very convenient. You'll just use that. eighth of an inch in from the, the uh, datum C, quarter inch up from datum D, we're good. Now this looks really close because this is a large diameter. the center. I'm going to use the number one because it's so delicate and I want you to see how to do that. If you have a machine that has a really stiff quill, use the number two. You're probably going to break the number one and you won't even hear it. The tip just is gone. But if you want to use it, I can usually help you loosen that quill up. You're going to do each of these holes as a separate unit. Do not use the machinist trick of center drilling here, then moving over and center drilling here. Center drill, drill, and ream. That way you don't leave even a tenth of a thousand of the location. Because that will make the drill snap.
Okay, and I'm going to go to 1750 RPM. This little drill needs a high speed, and if I remember my calculations right, uh, drilling in low carbon, 80 surface feet for a number 32 drill, which is 110,000, uh, is it 110? The number 32 drill is 116,000. 116, so, 4 times 83, 20, divided by 0. 0.116 equals 2,758 RPM. You've gone real close so you can see that you're not over drilling. Okay, once again, I want to control my depth. I'm setting the drill in the mouth of the hole, and I want to drill, uh, we're reading one half inch deep, I want to drill at least five eighths of an inch deep to three quarters of an inch deep. It's a small drill, so we don't want to go deeper than we have to. Right? I'll just adjust my collar up. I'm ready to drill. Again, delicate, small drill, take it easy, don't push it fast, let it do its work. Doubts, put the drill down to the bottom of the hole without scale. Good. So reaming speed is just about half, 40 surface feet. For any metal, reaming speed is just about half of drill speed. So 1,400 would be it. I'll go down to 1,115. I know that seems very fast for a reamer, but that is normal speed for this size reamer. Set our depth accurately. 
So we place the reamer in the mouth of the hole. It won't quite enter, it'll be very close. And I'm going to set my stop one half inch plus about 10,000 for the part of the reamer that hasn't gone into the hole. All the way down. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500,000. the slop in here. I'm going to leave it there. In fact, I'll probably go... No, I'm just going to leave it there. Let's see how it comes out. And ease it down in slowly. Don't ram this down. clear chips and it will brush the chips off as you re-enter the hole. Just bottom it out on the stock and we're ready to test depth. I went in a full 500,000, but I touched off by just placing it. I just put it down in the mouth of the hole until it stopped, very gently. Huh? Check with my go gauge. Let's see if it'll fit up in here. I can't use it yet. I'd like not to move the part unless I have to. But if I have to, I will. Go down. No go gauge. Does not. Perfect. I'm waiting to check that. I think one of our depth mics has a rod that's this size that will go down in there. But the most exact way is to use a pin gauge that barely fits in there. Measure its length. It is 1 inch 998 thousandths long. One inch 998. Now we will use a depth micrometer to measure the distance from here down to here. The height that is not in the hole. Hopefully it will be right at one and a half inches. So we'll set our mic for there. We'll hold the mic exactly parallel to the rod. We have plus or minus 15 on this. We'll adjust the micrometer until the rod touches the, the, the surface of the part. And it's perfectly vertical, perfectly parallel to the part. And we are at 1 inch 491 thousandths. 1 inch 491. Subtract it and we will get our depth. 507,000. Our tolerance is plus or minus 15. We're good. I can grab the, the small countersink and just by hand, just do a little corner break on these holes. Just like that. You'll just see a little rim around it. Take a jeweler's file, file over it and over this. Make sure there is no burr sticking up. Feel that. There's a burr. So jewelers' files are very small and have very fine teeth. 
They're excellent for final deburring of something like this where you don't want to scar the part. And you're going to give your part a full going over. Every single edge has to be deburred. Skate it over there flat so that you feel the edge is completely smooth. Okay. So this is nice and smooth. Every single edge you're going to go over like this and like this. And uh, it does say that you can break all corners, break all shots, corners, max, 15 thousandths max. So they expect a little tiny bit of a corner break here. Okay, make sure there is no burr. Any questions? That's it.